two. Another album ranking here on Metal Band Chronicles. And today, we're gonna rank the 10 studio albums by the late, great Ronnie James Dio. So, you know what, we're not gonna waste much time. We're gonna get right into it. You know, you know, I don't think none of these Dio albums are bad at all. There's some that are better than others, but for the most part, they're not bad. I don't think. And it was pretty hard to rank the latter half. But I think I'm pretty confident in my rating. I mean, it could always change too in the future. But coming in at number 10 would be the last studio album by Ronnie James Dio. I'm talking about Master of the Moon from 2004. Yeah, Craig Goldie returned for this album on guitars. You know, it's got some good stuff on it, you know. One for the Road's a great track, you know. Oh, what else? Oh, the man that would be king. Sorry about that. Had a little trouble reading that at first. Yeah, The Man That Would Be King would probably be my favorite track on here. It's a good album. It's still a good album. Okay, coming in at number nine. We got Magica from 2000. You know, this would have been the period, too, where I really started getting into Dio. You know, it's still a good album. You know, Craig Goldie again on this album on guitars. I think for me, when it comes to this album, it is a bit too long, I guess. And it's not really that fast-paced. I mean, there's still good stuff on here, you know? I mean, as long as it's not about love, it's a phenomenal ballad, you know? Oh, what else? But anyways, coming in at number nine, Magica. Oh yeah, Fever Dreams. Fever Dreams. Fever Dreams kind of reminds me of a Rainbow song. From, you know, when Ronnie James Dio was there. But yeah. Magica coming in at number nine. Number eight. And originally this would have been my number ten. For probably the longest time. I'm talking about the 1996 album... Angry Machine. Apologize for that noise. They're doing some kind of road construction. I can't get that noise out. But yeah, Angry Machine from 1996. Man. This is a heavy, heavy album. It's a dark album. It's definitely different from the Dio we're used to, you know. It's much more political, you know, there's some more social topics on this album. You know, you got Institutional Man that begins the album very dark and heavy. You know, Don't Tell the Kids, a speed metal track. Mm, yeah. Double Monday's freaking heavy. You know, Dying in America, it's a very dark track. Kind of reminds me of what's going on now, actually, to be honest. But that's number eight. Coming in at number seven. We got the 2002 album and the only album to feature Doug Albridge on guitars. I'm talking about Killing the Dragon. You know, there's good stuff on here, too, you know. The opening title track, Killing the Dragon's Good, you know. Push is a good track, you know. Rock and Roll's a phenomenal track. So yeah, man, this is kind of Dio returning to the Holy Diver, Last in Line type of route. You know, it's a good album. Okay, the only album they did with Rowan 
Robertson on guitars, and he was only 17 at the time, and Jens Johansson, who was originally in um, Ingwe Melnstein's band and Stradivarius, I'm talking about Lock of the Wolves from 1990. Originally, this would have been ranked lower too. It's a pretty lengthy album. It's a pretty slow album. But it's actually a really good album. You know, some doomy stuff on here, you know? Yeah, it's a good album. I know when I was younger, I didn't like it, but it grew on me over time. All right, so that is your... That was number five. Okay. Coming in at number four, we got the final album with Vivian Campbell on guitars. I'm talking about 1985's Sacred Heart. Yes. I think it's still a pretty good album. I mean, the opening track, Sacred Heart, is good. Or, I'm sorry. King of Rock and Roll, excuse me, King of Rock and Roll, that's a phenomenal track, you know, the title track, Sacred Heart's good, you know, it's still a good album, Hungry for Heaven, it's kind of commercial sounding, you know, but yeah, it's not bad. Coming in at number four, right, yes, number four, we got the 1987 album Dream Evil phenomenal album all the fools sell away man what a great track you know I mean yeah there's nothing bad about this you know just a phenomenal album first album they did with Craig Goldie on guitars too Okay, number three might be controversial, but I think it's a very underrated album, and this album just keeps going up the more I listen to it. You could call this Dehumanizer Part 2. Dio is angry on this freaking album, too, similar to Angry Machine, and this would be the first album with Tracy G on guitars. I'm talking about... Strange Highways from 1994. Great album. Great album. Jesus, Mary, and the Holy Ghost. What a track. Strange Highways. You know, there's nothing bad on here in my opinion. And it's definitely... Dio at probably his heaviest or one of his heaviest oh man number two number one and two I should say could switch back and forth any day but you know what mm. or these two albums could be tied to be honest but I'm going with the last in line the last in line from 1984 you know, need I say more about this? It's a classic for a reason. I mean, Quintessentry is sequel to Holy Diver when you really think about it because both albums kind of gel together, you know what I mean? Oh my god, just phenomenal. And of course, number one's gonna be Holy Diver. What more could be said? It's iconic. You know. Need I say more? Just a phenomenal debut solo effort by Ronnie James Dio. And that's it for my Dio album ranking video, guys. Keep it metal.